I'm going to take your interview skills to the next level, whether it's witness interviews, suspect interviews, whoever you're talking to, what I'm sharing with you this week will notch you up considerably. I'm going to teach you the last two questions I ask during any interview. Hi, this is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com. The next to last question that I ask during an interview is, what's the best way for me to get in touch with you? So these cases that we work, first of all, if you work them in the real world, you know we frequently come to them late in the game. Uh, things are kind of over. By the time they've gotten around to hiring a professional investigator, it's been a while. Uh, criminal defense cases, you know, they've already been indicted or they've been charged. And now they've gotten an attorney. The attorneys talk to pro everything. It comes kind of late. Accident investigations, you know, you might be brought in months after or a year after the automobile accident to start talking to witnesses. These cases drag out. So the next to last question I ask is, what's the best way for me to get in touch with you if we need to reach out to you in the future? Because you want to have a good, easy contact in a way that they want gets you most likely to get a response back from them. That's the second to last question. The last question that I ask in an interview is what is sometimes referred to as a Columbo question or a doorknob question. Uh, I don't remember, a lot of people call it the Colombo question. I don't know if I invented the term doorknob question or not. But if you remember the old Colombo uh, investigative shows, uh, he would kind of muddle his way along and he would play dumb when he was quite proficient as an investigator. And he would do his interviews, talk with people, thank them for their time, turn to leave. And as he reached for the door, sometimes as he touched that doorknob to open the door, you know, he'd do that thing where he'd touch his head. He'd go, yeah, oh, one, one last thing, you know, uh, let me ask you. And then he would ask kind of this key question, this really important question. Uh, now, if you've gotten my uh, free report over at shadowanyone.com titled, If You Want to Be a Private Investigator, Give Up, Unless You Do These Three Things, you know that uh, in addition to that report, I do have a, I don't usually tell people about this, but there is an audio lesson over there, a, a case study about the most important thing you need to know before you go into an interview. And it kind of ties back to this Colombo question in a sense. So the Colombo question is really kind of, I don't want to say it's a trick or a catch, but it's, it's a question that you've kind of been holding in reserve and you want to, you want to gauge their response by catching them a little off guard. So they've, They've agreed to see you, they're meeting with you, their defenses are up, and then the interview's over. Oh, we're done. I, he didn't ask me about the thing I was worried about. I didn't say that stupid thing I was worried I would say. Whatever it is, they drop their guard just that much, and you turn and you ask them the Colombo question, the doorknob question. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night, sir. Good night. Oh, Mr. Franklin. Uh... Actually, uh, there is one thing, not that it makes that much difference. I will give you a case study in the real world of a case I worked to give you kind of an example of this. There was a, a, a case that I was working where a young lady was being exploited and it had started out with a financial temptation which she had accepted and then it became the norm. Uh, when this came to light and criminal charges were filed against the guy, uh, now they have to determine credibility because it was really not an open and shut case. It really was one of those, it was a he said, she said, which is always dicey. And it, and it was genuinely up in the air who was telling the truth. So when I go and interview the alleged victim, the female, I did the interview, I asked her all the questions, but then I asked because she was getting $50 every time she was exploited. But there's no way she should have had $50, certainly not frequently. And even in the family dynamic, that would have been a lot of walking around money, spare money. So I asked her, how did you explain having this, this money? And every other question I had asked her, she had been asked by the police. She had been asked by the prosecutor's office. She had gone over over and over again. She knew the answers, and it wasn't that she was trite or even insincere, but I could tell she, there was no surprise. 
the Colombo question. How did you explain where this money came from? Clearly no one had asked her that. And it caught her off guard. And she kind of stumbled and said, well, I, I tell people I found it. And I could tell it was 100% sincere. She hadn't figured out how to rightly explain this. On the occasions when she had to, she would stumble through it just like she was stumbling through it with me. In that moment, answering that Colombo question, I knew 100% her side of the story was true. Now, that wasn't all there was to the case. I uncovered some more information that really would have made it a slam dunk for the prosecution. and But I'm able to bring this to my client, and he's the defense attorney in this case, and it genuinely is. I'm like, man, if this guy's being falsely accused, there's nothing worse. But I was able to come to the attorney and say, this 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 young lady is sincere and credible more than sincere she's credible she's believable and in addition to the other evidence i brought the the defense attorney could see that this was a slam dunk uh the client actually ended up pleading guilty took a plea bargain which did end up saving the victim from having to take the stand and go through all the the drama and arguably trauma of a trial, that type of thing. This was able to be resolved because of a Colombo question. And that's what I want to share with you this week so that you can really bring your interview skills to the next level. And what that means is collecting evidence and understanding what's going on so your client can make a good, rational, sound decision. If you're a real world investigator and you have experience with this, please feel free to share it with all of us. And anyone, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out to me. I'll answer all that I can. In the meantime, this is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.